All right, everybody, time for another tier ranking video. As you can hopefully read on the screen, I, I've enlarged the tier maker site on my browser. Hopefully that makes it a little easier for y'all to see. We are doing the theatrical Batman movies. Well, the, um, the pre-Snyderverse ones, anyway. Uh, obviously you can tell they're a little bit out of order down here. But, we you know, we have the usual S tier, A, B, C, D, and, um, you know what? Seeing as I don't hate any of these, and yes, that includes, that includes the Joel Schumacher ones, I'll, but I'll get into that in a bit, we are deleting the D tier. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so, also, I'm going to not do them in the order they are down here. Instead, I'm going to work my way up from C to B to A and then to S. I might make that the norm going forward we'll, we'll, for tier ranking videos. We'll see. Maybe I'll only do it for ones where there's a fairly small amount of items. Like here we have, you know, less than one full row. But yeah, C, we're starting at the bottom. And... Oh, this one's probably going to piss some people off. Batman Returns. It has good things in it, but I don't really think it's a good movie. Now, generally speaking, a handful of good scenes can save a movie, but that's really dependent somewhat on everything around it. And... Like, as good as Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer were in this, uh, Keaton, Keaton was better in the previous one. But, and of course, Danny Elfman's score, which is usually good, even if the movie, if, even if the movie he's scoring sucks. But, all in all, Batman Returns just does not really work for me. I, I think it's a little, it's too, especially compared to, like, most of the other ones in this one, including the Nolan ones, you know, the, the allegedly, you know, the, the darker ones. It just seems kind of mean-spirited. Batman in, in this movie, in, in this movie, more than any of the others, comes across as just downright sadistic and I, i'm including the lego batman one there where he's kind of mean but that's for comedic effect and he learns so that barely even counts but yeah c tier definitely for batman returns not really a fan of it i mean i liked it okay when i was a little kid but I was a little kid. I was like, what, nine, ten when this movie came out? Maybe, maybe even a little, maybe even a little younger. No, I'm thinking, no, I'm like nine or ten. Okay, still in the sea. We are going with Dark Knight Rises. I, I like it more than most people do, but yeah, it's still not great. I think uh, the muddled messaging for starters. Well. With hindsight, it's easy to see how the point was less, you know, Occupy Wall Street bad and more, you know, uh, be careful of charismatic people taking over and corrupting your movement. But that the, the fact that people are honestly still, like almost 10 years after this movie came out, oh God, it's been almost 10 years since The Dark Knight Rises. Fuck, I'm old. The, the fact that people are still arguing about this this long after it came out, about whether the movie is like a right-wing movie or a left-wing movie or or try, even trying to be a centrist movie, shows the degree to which Nolan failed. And I'm sorry, only some of that can be pinned on... I think it was pretty obvious that he planned to do more with Heath Ledger and Heath Ledger's death just completely threw him off. But uh, hey, no, that certainly wouldn't be the last time the third movie of a trilogy uh, got kneecapped by a, by a main actor dying. Hmm. Uh, one more for the C tier, and we're going to talk about Schumacher. Okay, Batman and Robin is not a good movie, 
but not for many of the reasons people say it is. I, I actually appreciate what Schumacher was going for here, going for a more campier thing, kind of a throwback to the, the Adam West Batman. It's, it's the execution that's lacking, really. Uh, characters are either underused or misused. I think, I think there's just too much going on. You, you, had, you really had too many main characters and too many subplots. I, mean, I don't really have that much of a problem with the costumes. That was a stylistic choice, and I can respect that. And honestly, while we're on that subject, can we just finally admit that a lot of the backlash to the costuming in this movie was kind of homophobic? Can we just all acknowledge that now? And I'm not saying that if you hate this movie, you're being homophobic. I mean, look at me. I put it at the bottom of this tier ranking list here. Well, near the bottom. I'd, I'd still say... Mm, would I say... You know, I don't usually do this with the moving things around on the, on the lines once I've put the movies on there, but... Yeah, okay, I'd say I like it better than Returns, less than Dark Knight Rises. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm not, so obviously I am not saying if you dislike the Schumacher Batman movies, then you're homophobic. I'm just saying that there was a homophobic tinge to some of the backlash to those movies, particularly on the internet. All right, so I, I think that's, that's going to be it for the C tier. Uh, let's move up into the Bs. These are the ones that are... Eh, they're, 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 they're pretty good. I wouldn't mind watching them again. And first one... Oh, this one's going to get me so much hate comments. The Tim Burton Batman movie. I loved it at the time. It hasn't aged particularly well for me. I, I think simply because just what I want out of a Batman adaptation has changed as I've gotten older. I, I appreciate it, but I appreciate it for what it was at the time. It was something of a rejuvenation for the character, which is good. Tim Burton is a, well, was a good director. I don't think he's really made anything of note recently. And, eh. I, I was I was vaguely interested in oh, was it Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but then his comments about why he didn't cast any black actors and it was just really stupid. So, but yeah. Also, you know, not that big a fan of the Nicholson Joker anymore. It's not bad. It just isn't doesn't really work for me. And, I mean, when I was young, he was, like, really only the second Joker I'd ever seen, apart from, like, Cesar Romero on reruns of the, the Batman TV series that, you know, on KCOP-13, along with reruns of the original Star Trek and the original Battlestar Galactica. But, you know, I mean, can, when, you, when you only have, like, two Jokers to look at, then I can see, see his appeal. <clears throat> But since then, you've had you know you've had Mark Hamill and you've had and you've had uh, oh god what I'm trying to record this during the summer that was a mistake <laughs> uh, yeah you've had Mark Hamill you've had Heath Ledger uh, you've had some other like voice actors that I am completely blanking on right now and I am terribly sorry I mean of course there was also Jared Leto but let's face it all of the Jokers are better than Jared Leto. Honestly, I think I am some of the some of the actors who've played Joker and Batman porn parodies were better Jokers than Jared Leto. Well, while we're still in the B tier, we're gonna go with. Actually, no, no, no. I'm putting that one up higher. <laughs> that was gonna be controversial, I'm sure, but I'm putting it higher. Uh, Batman Begins. Not a bad movie, but it does kind of get overshadowed by its honestly superior sequel and also uh, honestly looking back at it the things that really stand out most to me about it aren't even really anything about the story in particular it's mainly things like uh, Killian Murphy was a good scarecrow and the soundtrack is amazing uh, which 
Honestly, that that might mean I would need to put it lower, but n no, it's not, I don't hate any. I don't have any real problems with any of the other stuff. It's just that. Okay, so uh, Roger Ebert once said that the defini definition of a like a great movie is like at least two to three great scenes and no bad scenes. Batman Begins doesn't really have any bad scenes, or at least not any I can remember. It's been a few years since I've seen it. But I also can't really think of any particularly great scenes. No, okay. Um, <clears throat> Bale really playing up the whole drunken playboy cover story for for Bruce Wayne. He, he, he did that really well. He did even better in the next one. So that that was that was pretty good, but I mean it's really only one great scene, so can't really call it a great movie. But there are no bad scenes, so I can't really call it a bad movie either. And actually, I still wouldn't have called it a bad movie even if there'd been like just one or two bad scenes, because even some great movies will. Wait, I kind of just undercut my own point there, but yeah. All right. Um... Do I put it? Okay, yeah, no, I, I think I'm done with the B tier. So that means we're getting to the good stuff here with uh, A and S. And if you're looking at these posters down here, you're thinking, wait a minute, he's going to put... Batman Forever and the Adam West Batman movie into the A or S tiers. And yes, yes I am. And in fact, they're both going into A tier. Look, is it dumb? Yes. The, the, the sorry, the, the uh, 60s Batman movie, is it dumb? Yes. Is it fun? Also yes. Perfectly captures the the vibe of the TV show. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's colorful. It, it's not grim dark. It's not all, you know, Zack Snyder. -y. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, is it the? I mean, I I really don't think that I need to say much more than I I think at this point. I know it wasn't particularly popular at the time, I think. I don't think it was a big hit at the time. I mean, I think it made money, but it wasn't, like, a huge thing. I think time has been actually fairly kind to this movie, because it's like even the people who make fun of it aren't particularly mean about it. And Batman Forever, I just like it. It's certainly got its flaws. Better critics than me can, in, can explain, like, you know, the plot holes and all that. But... I think Val Kilmer was good in the role. I think the supporting cast is solid. Jim Carrey... I do think he could have dialed it back a little, but at the same time, if he tried, he might have dialed it back too much. It might have gone too far in the other direction, and Riddler kind of wouldn't have been theatrical enough. So, I mean, which is worse, a boring Riddler or an over-the-top Riddler? personally i would say a boring riddler so there you go and the soundtrack kicks ass i don't really think i need to say anything else about it the soundtrack just flat out kicks ass if you don't have the the album you know with and not just the seal song although that is pretty good and the u2 song which i like there's a brandy track on there that's pretty good there's the offspring uh the flaming lips um uh, the, the late Michael Hutchinson's on there. H or is it Hutchins? Oh, damn it. I like In Excess. You'd think I would have remembered that. Uh. But yeah. Great soundtrack. Arguably the best soundtrack of any of these on the list. <laughs> Sorry, Hans Zimmer fans. But, um... Yeah, and, uh, uh you know, one more for the A tier, but... You know, I think I kind of explained the, this, my feelings about this movie back when I did the Letterboxd Top 40, which is, I do still think it's a good movie, but my opinion on it has dampened somewhat over the years, due in large part, I mean, less for the content of the movie itself and more for my just sort of general feelings on Christopher Nolan 
both as a director and as a person. So, yeah, even though Heath Ledger was amazing, he earned his award and had a great score. Uh, Aaron Eckhart was great as Harvey Dent. A little less so as Two-Face, honestly, but, you know, these things happen. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've said a fair amount about The Dark Knight and the letterbox top 40 tier ranking video so go watch that and then of course we get to the s tier and <laughs> okay i didn't i actually did not plan it this way because i started this video pretty sure i was going to put dark knight in the s tier and it was only when i got to it that i realized that i didn't want to do that we're putting the animated ones up in the s tier mask of the phantasm which should have been a huge theatrical hit, but they kind of got screwed over by Warner Brothers there. Uh, just great story, great visual style. It has a great score, great supporting cast. Dana Delaney was fantastic in this. You can see why they would bring her back to play Lois Lane for the Superman series. It's set in the same universe. Kevin Conroy is just an iconic Batman. The, the fight scenes are really fluid and well done. It is just, it's a great, great movie. And then Lego Batman. It is fun as hell. All sorts of great in jokes that people who've been a fan of the character for years would appreciate. Uh, so, the story manages to be like, you know, kid friendly without being insulting. The. The dynamic between Lego Batman and Lego Joker is actually pretty interesting and also in a way kind of makes explicit some stuff that's really only ever been hinted at in some other adaptations. It, it's, it's just, and it looks so cool. The, the CGI holds up. The CGI is amazing. It is just a really, really fun movie. And hey, Billy D. Williams finally got to play Two-Face. <laughs> <laughs> at least in some fashion so yeah I was like I've got really nothing bad to say about Lego Batman movie I mean I gotta hope we get a sequel and okay it's not particularly great that Rosario Dawson plays Batgirl but that's that's a whole other issue she's got she's not like the most she's not like the worst person in the world but she's got there's some uncomfortableness going on there, and eh. well, allegedly anyway. Before any any of her stands jump into the comments, but yeah. So okay, here we go. Uh, my ranking of the Batman movies, which is as I will. <laughs> okay, to be fair, it it sort of seems like at least once a year I find myself reevaluating how I feel about the Batman movies. So. You know, who knows? In like, like six to nine months, I may have, I, I may not stand by. Okay, I'll probably stand by having Mask of the Phantasm and Lego Batman up in the top, but I don't know how much I'll be standing by any of these other ones. I'll probably still have Batman Returns at the bottom, but yeah. So, so here you go. I uh, hope you like my list, and if you don't, well, too bad, it's my list. <laughs>